When you explore Toronto's evergreen farmer's market, have outdoor swim practice in the town of Caledon, or visit Burlington's Royal Botanical Gardens, it's unlikely you'd know that all of these places were once either a gravel pit or a quarry. That's because the stone, sand, and gravel industry has been rehabilitating former work sites for years. In fact, they have to. To get a license to extract sand and gravel or stone in the province of Ontario, you need a, an approved site plan, and that site plan includes a rehabilitation plan that's approved before you take the first spoonful of gravel out of the site. Rehabilitation of a pit or quarry is the process of restoring the land from what it looks like after all the stone, sand, or gravel is removed into its new use. Things like wildlife habitats, wetlands, golf courses, recreational parks, conservation lands, housing developments, forests, and farms. And those rehabilitation plans uh, very explicitly outline the final landform that's to be created, whether it's to go back to agricultural, how you're to manage the soils, the type of habitats that you are created. So you have a very specified uh, program that lays out what the uh, final requirements are to do. We're actually using this land for a very short period of time. They'll all be returned to a natural state and they really will have very little influence on the surrounding environment. I'm an environment manager and I try to ensure that we're always doing the right thing. It's vital to our communities and we understand that and we do a lot to protect it. Over 13,000 hectares of former quarry and pit sites have been rehabbed over the past 20 years in Ontario. It's the law. Today, no license is given without a detailed site rehab plan. But 50 years ago, that simply wasn't the case. I look at really old aggregate sites. This is a former quarry. 70 years ago, this would have been a very active site. This site would have, been, would have shut down and would have been left in sort of an unrehabilitated uh, condition. Not like what we would see today. But the quarry excavation has filled up, uh, provides uh, a lot of habitat for waterfowl, fish. The broken rock also provides habitat for uh, a lot of snakes. Mother Nature did it herself. You know, we can look at this and say, okay, what, what's working here? What's not working here? What can we do at our sites to make them come back like this more, more quickly, more productively? But this industry is not letting these sites just sit there. Producers pay a fee for every ton they extract to help rehab some of the older sites from a past era. This is done through the MAP program, which is administered through the Ontario Aggregate Resources Corporation. Rehabilitation specialists work with owners of old sites to clean them up. Some are naturalized, simply letting nature take over while making sure the areas are safe. Others are turned into agricultural lands. Once upon a time, um, it was uh, very common for a quarry just to be a, a lake. Today's day and age, um, you know, there's a big call to progressively rehabilitate and, and uh, make our sites uh, match the environment that they're in. On site here, we have about 100 acres of vineyard and we have approximately another 100 acres of agricultural land which are currently farmed. We progressively rehabilitate. That means starting site rehab early, while it's still in operation, beginning to restore the land to a former use, a new use or a condition that's compatible with the surrounding landscape. Doing this throughout the working life of a site makes sense for a lot of reasons. It's in the best interest of a company economically to have a phased progressive rehabilitation approach. When you're stripping the topsoil and the subsoil from that area, you're immediately placing it into an area that's been extracted. You're moving the earth once instead of twice. Good rehabilitation pays for itself. The material doesn't sit in a stockpile uh, for years and lose its, uh, its biological viability. And to show progress is just something that society wants to see. And good site rehab means you might not see it at all. This country road in Wellington County cuts through a former sand and gravel pit now farmlands. The scenic windy drive through Caledon's popular Forks of the Credit goes through a former quarry site. And tucked in behind this forest in Milton, adjacent to an active limestone quarry, is a vibrant wetland. What we're going to be looking at is a rehabilitated wetland area. It's about a 35 hectare area. And this is an area that has already been 
historically extracted. This rehabilitation qualified for redesignation in the Niagara Escarpment Plan to go to Escarpment Natural Area. And that's the most prestigious and the highest order environmental designation. When you go through and look at a lot of these sites, you would be astonished that these were formal gravel pits. You know, we've created wetlands, right? We have a mitigation system that recharges the groundwater so that we're supporting Jefferson salamander habitat. We do monitoring for all kinds of bird species, butterflies, bees. I think seeing your progressive rehab is what surprises people because you can talk about it, you can show photos. When you're actually here and you're you're standing out over our wetlands. That's where you get people's attention, so they actually are experiencing it. There's people who look at herptotoads, at reptiles, at plants, at birds. There's groundwater people, there's geologists. We can make the lands more productive after. We have that technology, we have the proof. We, whether it be better crops, more habitat, cleaner water, those are all part and parcel with rehab. I'm a beekeeper. I capture wild swarms that are living in our pits and quarries. And why do I focus on those areas? Because those are areas where there are no pesticides, there are no herbicides used. You know, we, we raise those colonies up and we split them, and then we allow them to swarm out into the out, out into the local forest. So where honeybees can teach us where we've gone off base, you know, and, and where where we're, we're we're stressing the environment. It's also important that human beings try to live with the environment the best way they possibly can. Not only does effective site rehabilitation aid with biodiversity, it can sometimes even help create local businesses that can contribute to both the economic and ecological health of areas surrounding former pits and quarry sites. We're at the CBM Azumi Aquaculture Fish Farm. So this aquaculture site grows rainbow trout for the local market. The lake is the uh, water source as well as where the dissolved fish waste is going to help support the growth of, of plants and animals. It's giving us that nutrient in the most natural form to create a, a very diverse and productive ecosystem. And this business is helping us with rehabilitation. It, it's a, a new and innovative use that provides local food, local jobs, and an enhanced environment. So originally where we are standing here today used to be uh, former uh, agricultural uh, use. And there grew a range of crops here in this area. And when we decided to license this area because it had a pretty good sand and gravel deposit, we established on our site plans how that final agricultural field would look. The final plan was to return this area back to agricultural. It only took three years to fully extract the resource and rehabilitate it back to agriculture. So what used to look something like this can now look like this. But, despite all of this successful rehab, public perceptions about this business can still be a challenge. You know, we're not big corporate monsters. We're responsible stewards of the land. The environment is our business, so our business needs to be in the environment. It takes an understanding of uh, both the communities that host the aggregate operations and the aggregate producers themselves that collectively they've got to work together towards a long-term solution that looks at what is truly the public benefits that can arise from these sites to better our communities in the future going forward. I take a huge amount of pride in how well I can create a, a high-end environment that blends in with the natural landscape. My goal in rehab is to leave things in a better condition when we're all done. It's not always perfect, absolutely. It's never easy. Um, I don't think it's supposed to be. There's a lot to do in terms of protecting the environment. I'm a bit of an environmentalist at heart, so I think that my friends always just think like, oh yeah, she's saving the planet, right? One, one site at a time. Having that balance of leaving something enhanced, something better behind, it makes me you know, happy about the work that I do every day. So, the next time you take a walk in parklands, enjoy a serene moment in nature, or simply look out the window onto your subdivision, you might just be sitting on the site of a quarry or gravel pit from the past that's been transformed into something brand new for all of us. <laughs>